everyone. You designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne. It's Joan Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. And we've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. Today is episode 162, Avoid These Common Decorating Mistakes. Oh, yeah. That'll be really easy. <laughs> I have a laundry list. Oh, yeah. There's so many <laughs> possibilities in the mistake realm, but been, we're going to have to Been there, done them. that. Been yeah. there, done yeah. that. <laughs> I know. Haven't we? I mean, yeah. I feel like we. these are probably going to be a list of things we've all done. Right. Yes. Yes. And, or things that you haven't thought about doing wrong yet, and we can help you avoid them. Okay. Let's start talking about decorating mistakes. Ooh, like bloopers, you know? Oh. Yeah, you- bloopers, but also just stuff to avoid and stuff to consider so you don't make a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, let me tell you, and I've, I've sort of told this one before, I um, we have a Pottery Barn outlet that's very close to us, and I needed um, a set of, of uh, curtains to go to in to go into a guest bedroom and I wanted these beautiful blue and white ones. I saw them online. I thought, oh, maybe they have them there. Well, they did. And when I brought them home, they were mislabeled. So I had one that just like puddled so all over half of the floor of my of the bedroom. And the other one was a high water. Oh, oh no. I know. So you have to really take things out of the bag and look at everything well, but also be very careful that you're hanging your curtains high enough and you're not, and you don't want them to be high waters, but you also don't want to have yards of fabric pooling all over the floor. It just looks so sloppy. And you definitely don't want to have one of each on the same mm-hmm. window. <laughs> Unless you have a bed. Oh, you, know, you might want to write yeah. that tip down. <laughs> now, yeah. that's interesting. We didn't, uh, listen, we didn't tell each other our list ahead of time. And that was the first item on my list. Oh, is, is the curtain lengths going all the way to the mm-hmm. floor. But, you know, I just wanted to talk a minute about this because sometimes there's a window that's not real tall, but it's a long way from the floor. And I think sometimes having curtains that go all the way to the floor would look odd with maybe a two foot window that's up high. Oh, uh, yes, definitely. So, you know, like some of those, I think an older house of ours had a window that was about two feet tall, but about five feet wide. And so Mm -hmm. I think if you have a window like that, because I figured someone's going to ask, I would probably avoid curtains on that particular window because I think that would look weird either way Mm -hmm. on the curtains, the short ones Mm -hmm. or even long ones. What what do you to think. I think I think you could put blinds on that, like some mm-hmm, cute right. bamboo blinds or something. Right. But yes, definitely avoid a curtain. Well, I don't know. I I might oh. depending on the window. I mean, if the window was a little tiny square and it was up high, of course I wouldn't put something on it. I might just leave it the way it is. But if it's a like a normal quote, nor whatever normal is, but if it's like a double hung or something like that, but it's just really high off the ground for whatever way the house is uh, put together. And so maybe that it looks good from the outside, but from the inside, you have this rather long space between the bottom of the window and the floor. Then maybe if you wanted to put a regular curtain on it, you would just take the curtain to the end of the, the woodwork. And so, or do a cafe only to the end of the woodwork, something like that. I think you can still use a curtain. It, it really would depend on the, the window. I'm just saying, use some cute bamboo blind. Uh, it always looks good, no matter what kind of window you have. And it's a very safe bet. Yeah, yeah. that is. No, I, I like that look a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, here's something that people, I think, commonly make this error is thinking that white paint will make a small dark room look bigger and brighter. Actually, the opposite is true. White works best in spaces which get a lot of natural light already. And white paint is not going to magically create space where there isn't space. So it, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it doesn't. It's not, it has you know, no magical properties. <laughs> no, it does a lot of wonderful things if you already have natural light. And you know the space is not dim. But um, it's not going to create space. So actually, in a small space, if you wish it to appear larger, use mid 
to deeper tones on the walls and the walls will recede away and give the impression of space. Mm, right? And also that's really a good one. white paint might look great in a well-lit room, but sometimes white paint in a dark, smaller room just looks dirty or dingy and nobody wants that. Oh, so okay. you might want to th- really consider that first. Um, and again, you could go check out the bear paints for that. And I have another paint thought um, while we're on that topic is there people often paint a room before they decide on the furniture and the details. And I think that's a bad way to go. I agree with oh, you. Oh, I agree with you. You can still, you know, people say, oh, okay, well, let's paint everything and get it all nice and freshly painted. And then we'll go pick out the sofa or the Bedding. pillows or yes, whatever. Sure. Okay. But, you know, here's what you're doing. I, I understand that idea because I love to do everything from the ground up foundationally and build it on it. And, you know, and, and that seems like what you're doing. So, Perhaps, you know, just logically, that would make sense. But when you really get into the details of decorating, it's simply that there are zillions and zillions of paint choices. You could even get custom paint choices, all right, and to match what you've got. But there's just only so many fabrics and so many weaves and so many palettes that that will work in your furniture. So you're making your job a heck of a lot harder by deciding on the paint first. So go in the other mm, one, order. Good. That That is yeah. very good. I have another one and I know I'm going to get a little blowback from this. I'm going to say... I love it when she's controversial. She says that a lot. Like, I don't care. Like, are you looking for a fight all the time? I think no. she is. Yeah. But I'm just bringing you some decorating She's thoughts. cranky today. No. No, how I'm about, just teasing. How about... Um, I think a decorating mistake is when you load your fridge up with too many pictures and doodads and yoohoos and wahoos and you know things like that so and and uh magnets i want to add to that so it's duh i I don't i'm just not i've never been a refrigerator magnet person yeah so nothing on your fridge is best I don't have anything on my. Oh, but- you could put a little artwork from little Sarah or little Johnny if you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. But rotate it, rotate it, keep mm. it moving. I have to say, I don't know if my mom will listen to this one, but she does listen to the podcast. But when I was little, I think I've mentioned you her taking me to the Roosevelt Field Mall and dragging me through Yankee Candle and all <laughs> yes. of that. Okay, we would also go to one of the little like Hallmark maybe. And honestly, and my mom, like, we laugh about it. She's like, what was I thinking? She would buy a little pom-pom, like, fluffy magnet. Like, she'd get herself a new one every time. (laughs) And then, because she's my mother, and mom, if you're listening, you know how much I love you. And I love that I am so neat and tidy as, well, not as neat and tidy as you, but, you know, that you handed that down to me. But she would take a little wet cloth and she would fluff them and dust them off. And they were on her fridge? Uh huh. Oh my goodness! <laughs> On the avocado fridge. Mm-hmm. And like All my right. mom, my mom could decorate. I mean, she's got a great sense of style. I don't know what it was with these little fluffy magnets. Okay, it's a deep, dark well, secret. We're now just, I told everybody. No, now we know. Now, but I'm just saying, and it's not because we don't love your children or anything like that. Um, there's really great options for, you know, get a big, beautiful frame and put put all kinds of the art in that and let it revolve. I mean, do something like that. Yeah. Uh, instead of putting it on your fridge, because it really makes your kitchen look messy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got another one too. Having sort of the granimals look in your house, like everything's too matchy. Everything came in a set or, you know, you bought sets of pillows or you bought sets of furniture and it just doesn't have the tension that it needs. It does, it needs a little something pulling it in the other direction to be interesting. So, you know, it's kind of like sometimes you might go into a model home and, you know, while it's nice and everything looks very presentable and the colors are nice, it just doesn't have that mm, that a really well-decorated and designed room has. So I kind of tend to think about that as the granimals. Remember those from years and years ago? You could buy the outfit by the tag that was on it, and then it, you would know it went together. So avoid that when you're decorating. It's way too safe. Okay, so I've got another one. Even though you might really, really want to have a beach house someday. 
if you're living in a really urban setting or in high rise or in a condo in the city or something like that, or you really, really want to have a farm with chickens, but you're living in the suburbs somewhere, don't decorate your house like you're living at in a beach cottage and don't decorate your house like you're living in a farm. Like really try to have something suitable for your surroundings that makes sense. So whether you want to refer to it as a theme of your house, or if you are just thinking about, you know, the, the design elements that you're going to add, have it work with the actual geographic location that you're in. I think that that's going, you know, off the bat, it might be like, oh my gosh, I just want to beach house so badly and let me have it look like this. But it's just not going to seem right. And people mm-hmm. are going to think it's odd when they come to visit that you have this whole beach vibe going on, but you, you know, you look out the window and you have city streets or you've got you know, <laughs> exactly fresh eggs for sale sign, but you mm-hmm. know, you're, you're in a cul-de-sac in a subdivision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I totally agree with that. That that's kind of a disconnect with yeah. you know, you want to have some connection with your house and you want to have uh, some feeling of, you know, having something to do with where your house actually is. So, you know, I've you've mentioned that before and I, I think that's really a good point to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have one, Nita? Oh. Yes. Hold well, on. I thought you might. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because I feel like sometimes we put our houses together and it feels disjointed or discontinuous or it just doesn't feel like it has a flow. Mm-hmm. So I think that's something to really keep in mind is to think, are the colors kind of working in the room? Are they equally spread out? Or do you just have kind of color over in one corner and not in another corner? When you And again, I'm going to go back to my take pictures of the room and think about if I take a picture of one direction and another picture of the room, another direction, and then look at the pictures separately, do they look like they work together or do they look like they're from two different rooms? you know what? That's like Mm -hmm. taking the take the picture thing to a whole nother take the picture level. I know. I know, right? (laughs) Wow. It's so true. But it it is true. It is true. Like I'm just adding this little bit of pink into my um, living room. And so I just started on one side and I had some pink flowers that I put across the mantle and that looked really Ooh, great. Sounds and pretty. It, it It is pretty. And that, but, and I was waiting for these pillow covers that I ordered, but they didn't come yet. And so that part of the room, I really liked it, but it didn't look like it went with the rest of the room at all. And now yeah. the pillow ca- ca- covers came. Now it's only just two pillow covers, but putting them around the room. And then I moved another little vase of flowers and I had a little pink depression glass thing. And all of a sudden, so really I added three little vases of flowers, two pillow covers from Ikea, Mm -hmm. and a little pink depression glass, a little canister sort of thing over on the other side. And bam, now my eye is traveling all over Mm -hmm. the room. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it all is in one room and should be together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have another one. Um, How about not having any house plants? You know, I used to do this because I was, I just sort of kill house plants, but Uh, not anymore. Guilty as charged here. I turned over over a new leaf. (laughs) 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 But I think you should have house plants. And I think um, you need to avoid um, being sans house plant. What do you think, girls? Oh. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. if, you know, they're not that expensive. Again, you know, go to Home Depot. That's where I get used, <laughs> usually get my house plants. If you win, with that $50, you can probably get two or three good-sized mm-hmm. house plants. Mm-hmm. I suggest, like, the very um, typical um, – I think they call it kind ficus of like the, and things ficus, like that. Ficus, but there's also one that they call the Fiddly. umbrella plant. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a really common one that they'll have there. And mm. uh, they're nice and full and they're nice and green. And it's really hard to murder them. Mm-hmm. And you need that organic, something living to well, bring life to a room. I so agree with both of you. And I found a long time ago, I used to have a lot of plants And I found they just didn't do as well inside as outside. So many years ago, I just moved all my potted plants outside because they just seemed to thrive out there and not as much Mm -hmm, inside. mm -hmm. But many, many years later, I was looking around and really it was after we started the podcast. And I thought, you know, I miss having the plants inside. Mm -hmm. And that's when you had Ivy. Right, Ivy. Mm -hmm. I'm on Ivy. Mm -hmm. Hashtag two. 
That's oh, so on my <laughs> second two. ivy, right? Mm-hmm. But also ferns. The fern. I love having the ferns and the ivies. Mm. And I was, you know, I also did the paper whites this year and just put them oh. in my bedroom. And I thought, because I have uh, several of them, and I thought. What a luxury to have this in my bedroom. It just felt so amazing to me. And I me. bet you they smelled beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, and I've also They're got real hyacinths, at, mm-hmm. hyacinths at Trader Joe's. They were two ninety nine in in the glass <gasps> oh. container. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And someone asked Joe. me, someone <laughs> on my blog said, well, how do you keep them from tipping over? And I, I said, well, they're not tipping over. Well, of course they hadn't bloomed yet. As soon as they bloomed, they tipped over. <laughs> oh, so Thank so, you. So yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. So I had to put a little chopstick in there and mm-hmm. put a little string and tie its little head up. And, oh, and then I yes. put some little, uh, toothpicks in the bulb. So. Oh, yeah. very good. Mm-hmm. Very good job. Oh, well, that's, yeah. I definitely think so. And I would say, you know, again, air on the side of, uh, Less is more, bigger is better. Yeah, not one so jungly. One, mm-hmm. Yeah, and get one of those plastic dishes to go under it so you don't ruin your floor. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Here's another one about avoiding common decorating mistakes. I know sometimes when people are decorating, they become weary mm. of the process. They're perhaps not as crazed about it as we are, or mm-hmm. they're just too busy, or they just want to be done, or they just want to have a place to sit down. But don't settle. Don't settle Great specifically point. on big mm-hmm. items because, Great point. you know, it's a sad, sad truth, but sofas last more than most marriages, right? So Ouch. you're going to be with that sofa a long time. <laughs> Get right? rid of your spouse, not the sofa. So you don't want to, I mean, you know. I'm you want, keeping Bobby. 
right? Nobody would say, oh, just marry him, settle, just get it over with, right? So don't do that when you're you're buying particularly a big ticket item like a sofa or something like that. Take your time. Mm -hmm. If you have to get interim, some folding chairs, something like that, but make sure you love it. Make sure it's really comfortable. Get the swatches. Go sit on it if you can. And uh, if you're buying online, read all the reviews. Order a swatch and do and do your homework. But Mm -hmm. do not settle. Don't race through decorating your home. Well, remember how we said that you know we've been talking about how you really need to replace your sofa so often. And remember, we also talked about replacing pillows. Mm-hmm. Yes. So mm-hmm. I just got new pillows. I was so excited about it because mine, you know, they were kind of gotten flat. And you know how Kevin likes a flat pillow. And I thought, well, everyone knows how Kevin likes his pillow. <laughs> I know. And I thought, it's really, honey, it's time for a new pillow. So I said, hey, I'm getting a new pillow from Amazon. Would you like a new pillow? And I found some that had great reviews, which uh, I will link to. Uh, but he said, yeah. And I thought, yes, we're finally getting rid of that flat pillow. He's approved it. <laughs> I asked him first. And then the pillows came and, you know, they're all depressed. You know, they're, they've sucked all the air out of them. Mm-hmm. So you've got to open up mm-hmm. the bags and they fluff up. And so I let them air out and and I put a fresh, clean pillowcase on both of them oh, and put them on I the bed. Like I can't wait to go to bed now. I know. And, I, and that <laughs> night I was said, the pillows came and I put them on the bed. And aren't you excited? And he said, I don't think I'm ready for it just yet. Oh, he backed out. I know, after all of that work. And so his new pillow is in the closet waiting for him. Well, when he's Aww. ready. When he's ready. When he's ready, right. it's right That's there. Right. That's right. I have, I have another um, really major big decorating mistake. And that is buying a rug that is too small for a oh, room. Oh, haven't we all done Major. that? We've oh. talked about this before. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. you want to save that little bit of money because the next size up is a lot more expensive. Don't do it. And no. we've talked about if you buy that rug, you can always buy like a a large sisal to put mm-hmm. under it and mm-hmm. layer it. Then you'll be safe. But definitely, definitely, definitely your furniture, the front of Front legs of your furniture need to be touching, yes, and sitting on that on that rug. Oh yeah, at least, mm-hmm. at, mm-hmm. Least. at least, yeah, right. And yeah. then, and, and I've done the. I admit to doing this where you put the little rug at the foot of the bed, and mm-hmm. you know that's just not a luxurious look. Like having one that is under the bed and and goes all out the way. You know, two yes. three feet on mm-hmm. on all the sides of the bed. So that's mm-hmm. something. To so do. just make sure you're mm-hmm. buying. The proper size rug for your room, and especially in your dining room. Oh yeah, Absolutely. nothing's worse than well. I mean, there are tons of worse things, but <laughs> that's just a silly thing to say. Stop that. But it isn't comfortable when you're sitting and you back your chair away from the table a little bit, and the back legs are off. Clunk. Yeah, they go They're off. down, the yes. you know, an inch or an inch and a half, depending on the pile. And then mm-hmm. you're up that way. That's, that's just mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. inconvenient. And I have, and I have a, um, uh, blog post on that and, mm-hmm. and about how to choose the perfect dining room rug. And we'll put that in the show notes. Perfect. How about this mm-hmm. one? Because I know we're all collectors. And what I used to do is if I had a collection, I had to show all of it. It well, all yeah, had worked to be- hard. Collect- I know, collect. darn it! I've been collecting this fill in the blank, probably dishes forever, and I have fifty thousand. And you're going to get to see all, <laughs> all of my of dishes. <laughs> I know, so I would make sure you could see the entire collection. And what I've realized is that can be overwhelming and an overload for a room. Mm-hmm. If you have an Well, and the first thing I would suggest if you have an overly large collection is to go through and see if you really even need all of that. Because Mm. sometimes we just have too much stuff. I found that a lot of the dishes I had, I just bought because they were cheap and I really didn't even like them. So I got rid of them. Yeah, sometimes Mm -hmm. the collector craze. Oh, it's terrible. Just because they're such a good buy. Like, oh, I can't pass it up. Oh, yes, sort of like It's sort of like the Mm. white dishes I like. So let me just get it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I... You're right. If it were a different color, I would like it. Yeah. I have 50,000. This would be the 50,000th and first, and it'll be fine. It's terrible. So, I mean, the first thing I would suggest is if you have a huge collection, is go through it and really think, 
do are all of these pieces of my collection something I really like and want to mm-hmm. keep? And once you've narrowed, once you've called it down, you might be able to display it if you have few enough things. But if it's still rather large, I would suggest just picking those favorite things and setting it out rather than having the entire collection displayed. Absolutely, it'll be yeah. it will look beautiful, not cluttered. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And you can mm-hmm. appreciate it. Another thing is when you're purchasing furniture uh, for a particular room, in my mind, I am thinking more of a living room mm-hmm. because there's different types of furniture in a living room, but it could really be any room. Mm-hmm. Um, think about the balance of the weight of the furniture. And I don't really oh, mean like point. if you put it on a scale, mm-hmm. but I'm saying really so the visual, 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 visual weight. Mm-hmm. Right. Visual right. Weight. Sure. So, you know, sometimes you say, oh, well, I really like wood or, uh, you know, I really like this. You don't want to have all of the same material and you don't want to have like something that has a big, if your sofa is like a big rectangle and it's touching the ground and it comes up and it's a, has a big presence to it. You probably don't want an equally big wooden rectangle coffee table and Mm -hmm. then another bigger square chair. And so everything is just really big and heavy and it's kind of weighting down. And if you had a big sofa and it was, you know, formidable in that, you know, maybe the fabric comes down to the ground or there's some wood or there's big sides or something. I would suggest doing something like a glass table or a table with metal legs and maybe some sort of marble top or stone top, something like that, just to change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's much more interesting for your eye and um, it'll, it'll just give a a more, um, your room more, more, it'll be more inspiring and and interesting Mm -hmm. to be Mm -hmm. in and really more comfortable as Mm -hmm. well. You don't Mm -hmm. want to feel like everything is just like thud. Well, right. And I would add to what you're saying, if one, if you have some pretty big, heavy, clunky pieces, putting some delicate things in there, I think it's going to feel weird. Very I weird. I thought yeah. you were going to say to do that. No, I don't think that's I'm good. Have to say no. Okay. Oh, good. Very, 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 very. Are you, good. are you disagreeing with me? No, I'm agreeing with what? you now. Are no, you no, disagreeing no, with me? No, 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 I'm agreeing with you. I'm so I'm if it's joking. what yeah, what you're saying is mix up the materials, don't make it too matchy matchy, but you, you're not saying having really big things with with delicate things, so I don't no, think. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's what no, yeah. No, not, just I mean, things having that are the, a little have a little vis- yeah. a l- visual weight. Right. So yeah, if you just kind of mix it up a little bit with the materials mm-hmm. right. and the Right. So the, the nuance pattern, of yeah. the words maybe you would say there's scale is somewhat the same, but right. the materials are different. Right. But the scale, right. You want the scale okay. same, the same. Right. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. And I have another one. Mm-hmm. This is such a biggie. If, um, uh, so this is a very, this is a very big mistake. Leaning you, in. At mm-hmm. least, mm-hmm. I know. Can't if wait to you hear. do not test your paint colors. Oh, oh yes. yes. Big, gigantic yeah. mistake. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. I thought I had a regular old white, a pretty soft white, painted a room and couldn't understand why it looks so green. Mm. Well, here the white reflected the tree outside mm-hmm. the window and we ended up with a green cast room. Oh, now, yeah. Now, had I, had I tested the, the paint color, I would have found right. that out before right. my husband totally painted the whole well, thing. Well, I think this is a huge mistake people make, Yvonne, and I so agree with you. I think we've all done this and you you have this kind of cockiness. Oh, yes, I'll take 20 gallons of that paint uh, there. And I remember I love buying, that color. <laughs> I, I love that. Of course, I'm going to. I mean, because I remember buying a ton of pink paint for my wall. Oh, yeah. And it was yep. Pepto Bismol. I don't even, don't even ask me why I was going with pink. Hey, it was a long time ago. Don't ask. But it, it was Pepto Bismol. Pink's back, baby. Pink's yeah, back. but not Pepto. But m- not millennial Pepto. pink is so different. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it was it was horrible, and I had to paint over it. It was terrible. Well, another mm-hmm. paint point um, is that thinking that paint is just paint, that is not true. There really oh. is something to the different degrees of paint and how it, I don't know what's the different degrees of paint. Well, you know, you go and you can get you know the the baseline paint. Oh, here's our, like, this is what you could paint your gr- inside of your garage with. Right? Oh, and I then, got it. <laughs> then yes. there's the upgrade, right? And then there's mm-hmm. the, oh, you know, this mm-hmm. is going to be I so fabulous. You. And there and, is something to that. Oh, mm-hmm. there really is. Mm-hmm. I, I, there really is. And like there, I have only used Pharaoh and Ball once or twice, uh, but there is something magical about 
what they have going on in their paint. And that, you know, first they were the only ones doing that. But now a lot of the other paint companies do that. Mm-hmm. And Benjamin I think, Moore, yeah, love, and, love, love their high-end paint. And, but Bear Paint also has wonderful paint. So, mm-hmm, but you know, mm-hmm. there, there are different levels of each brand mm-hmm, of paint. Mm-hmm. And so you, pre- you know, if you're painting your bedroom or your living room, a room in your home, you probably want to go with the higher end of you know, whatever paint company it's you're worth using. It. It right. is so Good idea. worth it. Yeah, because the coverage longer. is going to, mm-hmm. well, the coverage is going to be better and it coverage might better, make right? the difference between having to do two coats or just one. Yeah. Yeah. May, maybe. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, I have like a whole laundry list of things, but I want to get this in. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a, it, it is a huge mistake to try to decorate very formal. Oh, yeah. Not many people can pull that off. Well, because the way I get around it. Because stayed and stuffy. Well, I love formal things, but I mix them up with the rustic things so it feels comfortable. Because I love a lot of formal things. Well, and, I'm and just French saying furniture. totally formal. Right. You're, so what I'm saying is. to it. Mm-hmm. But, what I'm, but that's what I'm saying mm-hmm. is what you just said is you can do it if you mix it with the rustic things. Don't go all formal or it will because feel stuffy. Because if. The, I just think I look at some living rooms, let's say, you know, and I tend, if left to my own devices, I tend to get a little formal and I always have to tone that down. I have to be aware of toning that down. Uh, but if I, I sort of love the look of formality, you know, beautiful lines, beautiful fabrics, but boy, does it look stayed. But and are you saying that mm-hmm. you're saying that the, uh, a home decorator would have a hard time pulling that look off because it's hard to achieve? No, no, it's hard to live with oh, once yeah. you've achieved it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and also sort of along that same line, when things are too matchy matchy, mm-hmm. oh, that's like the kiss of death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not good. Putting uh, also if you have a smaller room, don't make the mistake of putting small furniture in it. Because all it's going to look yes. make it look like mm-hmm. is the little dollhouse room, mm-hmm. right? and it's gonna, not going to be comfortable. So you have to put normal size furniture, or even put a big armoire or something mm-hmm. in a small room, and that can really have a great impact on the way the room feels and mm-hmm. the way you live yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah, it right. depends on you know what, are there How windows much walls or things have, yes. like that, mm-hmm. and all of that. But just as a general um, tip to keep in mind is that. Just because you've got a small room doesn't mean it has to be small furniture. And rifting off the small, Mm -hmm. remember that kids are growing, right? So you uh, you may not want to do their room really little kitty, right? Because it's not going to grow Mm -hmm. with them. And I think people are doing a really great job now mm-hmm. of decorating nurseries yes, and children's rooms mm-hmm. whereas mm-hmm. before it was you know the border wallpaper with you know Humpty Dumpty on it or something like that and then all of a sudden <laughs> the kid wakes up and they're 13 mm-hmm. and they're like what? <laughs> ah, Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? So you know if you have mm-hmm. kids that are home remember that their room needs to grow with them so you know you can p- repaint mm-hmm. but maybe pick a color that's a little bit more neutral in the sense that it's not pink or blue or light yellow or, mm-hmm. or baby green or something like that pick a color that they can grow with and make in- investments in a, you know not a little dinky bed get mm-hmm. a nice size bed mm-hmm. a full or a queen they might have sleepovers things like that and you know think about the the basic furnishings that they are going to last with them until mm-hmm. dare i say they go to college, which is, <laughs> uh, which is happening and in your house. And then they come back, and then you're like, "Why are you back?" But uh, <laughs> I've, I've now changed your room into an art studio. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but anyway, that can you know, it also makes your kids feel a little bit more like um, you know, real people rather mm-hmm, than having mm-hmm. a room that has all little kittens on it or something. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, and you're right. I mean, there's so much change that's taken place in kids' furniture. And it's a huge new industry now. And I remember, you know, back when my kids were little, lamenting that there weren't nice pieces for kids' rooms and everything was too. And remember the ugly diaper bags they used to have? Oh, Oh. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. 
And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Oh, I was terrible. I said, I remember saying this to a friend. I'm not going to get pregnant until coach makes it a diaper. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that awful? Yes, it is awful. But they did. Oh, oh, thank you. I got it. And I Mm -hmm. laughed to myself. She's like, okay, I saw it. You're going to go. And I was like, Mm -hmm. well, I actually am already. And I'm going to go get it. But, um, well, it reminds me of a friend of mine. She said she wasn't going to get a watch until she had a Rolex. (laughs) Oh, well, oh. yeah, but she did I, I didn't one. have to wait as long as her. I have to tell you. <laughs> no, she, I, she married uh, someone who could afford it. So she was in go good girl. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you a story about my um, grandson's bedroom, which is just so amazing. Um, you know how I love walls need love. That's just mm-hmm. a, uh, they have a mural of the world, like an old mural. Oh, and yeah. they put that on their one wall. It's so, it's enchanting. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's then wonderful. they wanted to use mid-century modern furniture. So mm-hmm. they found a buffet and had somebody paint it um, like it was natural with some white. Mm-hmm. Like oh, nice. Locked. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Oh, wow. So, I always say to her, I want to get over there and just do a, a post on how, how cool the nursery mm-hmm. looks because Anderson will certainly grow up, you know, and, and enjoy that. No. Oh. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What a nice room. It ain't what it used to be. Did I, you guys have that? I had the white furniture with the gold trim, like, you know, that white, like, the, speckly The French furniture. provincial, right? Yeah, I had that. Oh. Well, yeah. I was just thinking last night, and I had completely forgotten about this, but when I was a little, little kid... My dad came home and just think about how you would feel about this. He was like, honey, guess what? He bought all new living room furniture without (laughs) consulting my mother. (laughs) Wow. And it was French. Bobby's suitcase might have been packed in outside (laughs) by the road. This was my dad and it was all the French provincial. It was a cream. Can you imagine, you know, In, our moms oh, back then, a cream whoa. colored sofa. Wow. And I think it had a matching chair. I can't even remember. I don't, I don't wow, know what I happened. I didn't even to know they made that for other rooms. That's crazy. And then there was a coffee table and the mat, everything matched the coffee table, end table. It had a, oh, it, my an inset of marble. 
Mm-hmm. It all makes sense now how you have this thing about French furniture. And I French don't design. remember <laughs> liking. The, I don't remember liking the furniture though. I, I'm joking. That is so <laughs> I, I I just have to ask, what was your mother's response? Well, you know, I was too young when they got it. I think she told me later about it that he just showed up with it, and she was oh, just, "What were you my. thinking?" But don't you know that hey, was a big fight, Bobby? Don't you? ever do anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. And it was, wow. and here, two little kids, and it's a, you know, basically a very light cream colored oh. sofa. And I have this vision, but now I can't uh. think if I dream this or if she really did it, but I have this vision of plastic, those clear plastic slip covers, oh. remember? That's oh. a big dough. That's a decorating That's mistake a to avoid right Nobody there. does that now, do they? I know. I, d- I don't I date, know. Um, I dated someone in college and I went to their house to visit mm-hmm. um, over one of the breaks and they had that. Was that plastic, a deal breaker? Plastic on the, uh, it wasn't Peter's <laughs> mother, no. <laughs> but, and, I, but I was like, I didn't think anybody did that. I was like, holy moly. Well, I yeah, might have dreamed like it. I can't toilet even, rugs. I'm not sure she did. <laughs> it, it's kind of a vague, this was when I was really oh. little, little, and I'm not, it's just all a blur. Well, yeah, it would be a mistake to let your husband buy all new <laughs> That would be avoid them. one of these decorating avoid mistakes. That. Oh yeah, that's definitely something to <laughs> avoid. avoid marrying somebody who would do that. <laughs> oh wow! My. Okay, yeah, but my dad never did it again. I can well, tell you that. I, well, I mean, he must you know, have had a good talking to. <laughs> I think he did. That kind of quality furniture can last a lifetime. Why would you have to do it again? <laughs> I think she still has the coffee table. Oh, or my something. God. No, maybe it's the end table. She still has one of them. Oh, how fun. Oh, bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. This was oh, so fun. And there's so many more things on this list that we could talk about that we've all done. Uh, we could just go on and on and on. But uh, we're so glad that you hang hang out with us three times a week <laughs> to talk about all the goofy things that we've done. And some hopefully here and there, there's some good things that we do that we uh, can, can share with goofy you. goofy things that our family members have done. <laughs> oh my goodness, I know. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey everybody, we want to thank you so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www.decoratingtipsandtricks.com. Or you can subscribe through Apple Podcast or any of your favorite podcast listeners. When you subscribe, DTT comes free right to you three days a week. So until next time.